so the story of the lathe starts way up in the rafters of the shop and across a couple of collar ties I have uh, the spring pole in this case a maple sapling that's about maybe 12 feet long the back end of it there lashed to that one tie then it fits in a notch over the next one and extends out here towards the end of the shop and tied to it is a nylon cord up at that end down at the business end it gets switched over to a, uh, a piece of lawnmower starter cord a trick I learned from the bowl turners Jared Dahl in particular nice sturdy cord so now we'll look next at the lathe itself Here's the pole lathe I use in my shop. It's one that I built with a friend uh, back in 1994 in my museum days. It's loosely based on historical information from artwork, not from any surviving lathe. Uh, but there's liberties here and there. It's a very simple thing to make. Uh, very stout timbers. These are reused house framing parts uh, the uprights and the feet so they are uh, I don't know their dimensions and it doesn't really matter uh, this upright is tenoned into that foot and in this case there are braces that are really just toenailed in place and back when we built it the feet were much much longer and in my old shop there was plenty of room in this shop there is not so I trimmed the feet as much as I could and it's plenty stable I haven't had it move around uh, so both are the same but this upright extends above the bed to form what might be considered the headstock of the lathe and here you see the fittings for it and they are pretty uh, pretty impressive handmade uh, nuts and bolt to fasten the bed beds plural to the lathe that's dramatic overkill you could just bolt that with modern fittings and this is the tail end of a bracket that holds the tool rest we'll see more of that uh, this hardware all of this hardware was made uh, by my friend Mark Atchison uh, great blacksmith I've worked with for many years but the business part of it all is right here and that is the piece the stock turns on or one of the pieces the stock turns on and that is called the screw and Mark made these for me at my request made them very stout so that for one thing they don't bend and this is three quarters of an inch in diameter and you see it fits all the way through that upright here's the the other end that you loosen and tighten it with uh, I wanted them stout like that as I said so they don't they don't bend here's the other half of they the one that's immovable uh, just a uh, this one's called the pin the other one the screw and this one is just bolted to that uh, the inner face of that movable pop but we'll look at this in a minute to come back to the screw uh, there's no nut I tapped it through this upright uh, just by itself so bored a hole smaller than the diameter of the screw and used the screw itself to tap that which was a brutal as I remember it took 45 minutes to wind that through there but you only have to thread it through there once and then it's threaded so uh, a, you know a Herculean task but it's over with uh, that's the immovable upright the fixed upright and this is the movable poppet so 
it too has that tool rest bracket extended through it but down below the bed you see the tenon that fits between the beds and is fastened in place with that wedge dead simple stuff um, and then we just bolted that pin to that uh, movable poppet. So uh, you slide it into place. You'll see me do that and then lock it by tightening that wedge. Uh, I think I mentioned the size of these points. Uh, part of why we made them so stout is that I make some chair rungs for large 17th century style chairs whose tenons are three quarters of an inch and that's the diameter of that pin so I can eyeball the rough diameter of my chair tenons right off of that when I'm turning them. <clears throat> I'll get to um, the business side of the lathe and we'll look at the tool rest and the brackets. The tool rest brackets are just this L-shaped iron threaded on its far end, loosely fits in a mortise in the upright here, in this case in the movable poppet, and then with a wing nut on the other end. So I drop the tool rest into that bracket, position it where I want it, and slide that up, and then tighten that wing nut on the outside there. This is really just a spacer block and then that wing nut will tighten that up. If I need to move the tool rest further away from my turning I put a spacer in here or snug it right up against there. Usually it's right up against there over at the other end, there's times when it needs to be closer, and I've got that notch on the tool rest itself, and then slide that bracket in, tighten that far wing nut, and now I can be up closer to a smaller diameter turning. The two inch stuff for joinery, two inch and greater. Ah, can't move it now. I need to, ah, there we go. Then it just braces it against the outside face of the upright here. And the tool rest itself is a stout piece of oak, maybe three and a half inches high and inch and a half thick at the bottom edge and then rounded here, just beveled with a plane or a spoke shave to be able to work the tools against it. You'll see it in action in the shots of turning the styles, but this is just to give you an overview of how the lathe is set up. Here you see the other end of that wedge for fitting that um, tailstock, and then just tighten that up like that. have one of the styles for that joint stool I'm making. And I always put the foot on my right, just out of habit. And here's the treadle swung around. Um, so I wrap it twice around the, wrap it, the cord twice around that style and pop it up here. I have marked this out. I've marked the centers on this piece and we wiggle that tailstock back a little so I, I snug it up and then knock this wedge nice and tight and then take up any slack here at that screw. Somebody was looking at this lathe one day and um, 
pointing out that it's backwards from uh, the historical ones that uh, extended upright usually on the turner's left. I don't think it matters. I've used this for 26 years just fine. And um, if it mattered to you, it would be easy enough to just flip the lathe around and stand over there. And so I stand on a plank back here and then set the uh, board so that it spins like that. So I'm standing on that plank and then the treadle bumps up against it. And that is how I get the lathe set up for turning up.